I want to take that question to you, Jessica. Do you think that Nancy Pelosi played an instrumental or instrumental or perhaps a key role in trying to convince Biden to step aside from the presidential race? I mean, certainly from the reporting we're seeing, uh, that's absolutely the case. She is a force to be reckoned with in democratic politics. Uh, and she was making the case privately uh, to the president and his inner circle uh, to, to step aside when she particularly saw the numbers uh, about down ballot races. In other words, the impact of Biden's unpopularity on other races at the local level, at the congressional level. And of course, uh, much of her career, uh, all uh, mo most of her career has been spent uh, in, in the House. And so she's very concerned about what happens to the Democrats uh, in the House and, and how much power they can hold on to. But I would say this, it's not just people like Nancy Pelosi that hold uh, the power here, because it, it does essentially come down to the purse strings. When the, when the uh, Biden donors started calling him and saying, I'm not going to give to your campaign anymore. Uh, that really sends a message that there isn't a, a financial path forward either. Uh, and even though there's a very big war chest, there's also a lot of spending in these elections in America. And so um, there really is, uh, um, you know, I, I think we have to look very closely at the impact that donors had as well, um, because they 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 want to get they want to back a winner. And they want to make sure that uh, they that they back somebody who can uh, take uh, their policies across that they favor across the finish line. And that person was not Joe Biden. I'd like to get uh, uh, correspondent Susan Tehrani into this conversation. Uh, Susan, Jessica made a point there that the donors were telling Biden that they will not sponsor him in the upcoming campaign. Uh, talk to us more about what we can expect in the coming few hours from Democratic elites and also boost in fundraising for Kamala Harris uh, with news just coming in that uh, Kamala Harris's husband has already started reaching out to the Democratic donors. Not only Kamala Harris's husband, but herself just in the past couple of hours has been working the phones. Uh, we do know that Biden had four fundraisers scheduled for this week right before he dropped out of the race. And the New York Times is now reporting that those fundraisers will go ahead. They're just going to uh, turn to Harris. Uh, those fundraisers, although no final decision has been made, but they want to, again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, they want to create this excitement around Kamala Harris, uh, that the vibe is good, because one of the concerns that the Democrats have is there's just not enough enthusiasm hmm. for voters to go to the polls, especially, uh, you know, those 14 million, 15 million voters that went to the polls at the primaries and voted for President Joe Biden. It appears that Biden has a finance event scheduled in Austin, Texas, Denver, Laguna Beach, California, and uh, Piedmont, California as well. Uh, the Austin event is connected to an official visit to the LBJ library. Uh, and so, you know, if the New York Times is reporting is accurate, these events will happen, but they will happen for uh, uh, Harris. And, you know, just as Jessica accurately said, when the money runs out, when the donors just don't want to contribute to a campaign, uh, that's the time when, you know, the candidate uh, or the nominee decides to, to step aside. But again, as I mentioned, we still don't know why President Biden decided to step aside. If it, it is because he thought that he couldn't win, then there's going to be a lot of questions about whether or not this is how things work. If it's regarding his health, then that's, you know, ultimately another story. Right, Susan, here on the show with Jessica and Mr. Gollum, we were discussing perhaps how this decision by Biden uh, has united the Democratic camp. Your assessment on that, because uh, earlier also we were discussing how uh, with Biden's shaken and uneven performance at the debate that had resulted in a lot of division within the Democrats. Do you think that this decision of Biden stepping down will perhaps unite the Democratic camp? Well, it, right now we're seeing divisions once again regarding Kamala Harris, although a lot of Democrats uh, have since 1.46 p.m. come out in support of Kamala Harris. We have major players like Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, President Obama, who publicly already said that the best nominee should you know, be put forth at the, Repu at the Democrat convention. Uh, so until we know who the nominee is officially, uh, it's hard to imagine that there will be some kind of unity. I do want to say that in the past couple of hours, we've also heard 
that Democrat turned independent, Joe Manchin from West Virginia, is thinking of turning back to becoming a Democrat and challenging uh, Kamala Harris at the convention. If that's the case, Joe Manchin is known to be a moderate. Uh, Kamala Harris, at least among independents, is not really considered to be a moderate, but a, a little more left than someone like Joe Manchin. So whether or not Joe Manchin is going to go into this race head to head with mm. Kamala is yet to be seen. But if he does, I think it'll be interesting to see which way uh, the numbers will sway, uh, not only among Democrat voters, but also uh, donors as well. Right, coming to you, Mr. Golub, uh, Biden still has six months of presidency left. Do you think uh, that he will ease into a lame duck presidency for the remainder of his tenure? No, I think he's committed to being as active as he can as president. Hmm. In some ways, he'll be much more active by virtue of no longer having the burden of running for president. These are two of the toughest jobs in the world, being U.S. president and running for U.S. president. I think he's he'll want to show that he's um, energetic and on top of the job all the way to the end. There are challenges in terms of the economy, in terms of foreign policy, Ukraine, the Middle East, all sorts of emerging issues which may yet come forward regarding which he'll want to show and he'll want to be on top of things. So I would anticipate quite an active Biden presidency up through the very end of his tenure, regardless of who wins in November. Um, I also want to seek your assessment on the fact that uh, we have been talking here about how Barack Obama has not endorsed Harris in his tweet wherein he lauded Biden, but he said that there will be an outstanding nominee that the Democrats will choose. Perhaps Clintons have endorsed Harris. Do you think that uh, these, these opposing stance by Clintons and Obama will perhaps complicate things for the Democratic camp going forward? No, because Obama is just a much more influential figure these days than the Clintons in, in terms of democratic politics and I'd say national politics. You know, he was president much more recently than Bill, was, than Bill Clinton was president. And Hillary Clinton, for all of the aspects of her service to the country that are praiseworthy, was a failed presidential candidate, twice actually. So it's Obama's stance on all this that I think is more influential. Again, as we've been discussing, let's see what Nancy Pelosi and some others uh, leading Democrats, I would include Jim Clyburn, uh, the, represent the black representative from South Carolina, who is very instrumental in national politics and in securing Biden the nomination back in 2020, see how they come out. I think um, you know Jessica made an excellent point about donors, and we'll mm -hmm. see how donors are weighing in for or against or neutral regarding Kamala Harris running. So that's a, those are the, the various forces in play. And again, I'll emphasize, if this does stretch out over the course of a few weeks, how the poll results, results may be going in terms of a bump or a decline from Kamala Harris, and in terms of if, if other candidates toss, toss their hats in the ring, if they get something of a bump as they're better known and as they may be subject to interviews or town halls or, or debates, as for one more thing, the Joe Manchin thing, that's an interesting development. He's talked about running before, maybe as an independent. I just don't think he's got the support within the Democratic Party, especially since he dropped out of it, to really generate much of a contest at the convention. Right, Mr. Golub, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I would also like to thank our VOA correspondent Jessica Stones and our correspondent Susan Therani for being here with us. We'll, of course, be tracking how Biden's decision of getting out of the 2024 race will impact the camp going forward. But right now, we're slipping into a very short break. Thank you so much.